been quite present, but I don't think I've ever been like reflective. It was. It, why not? I don't know. It's only in hindsight now. I realise how reflective I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the new record so much. Thank you. Have you listened? Yeah, man. Um, I, I love. I love the single. I love heaven. I love must be love. The mm. last track on the record. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Really great pop record. Mm. I was. I was texting Vanessa about it this morning and saying, "I wasn't I saying I can't get over how great Niall's record is." So thanks. congratulations on thanks it. Thanks very much. And I was so delighted to see you on St. Patrick's Day. I was, you know, I was going yeah. through Instagram and all that. And there you were with, uh, with Joe Biden mm-hmm. at the St. Patrick's Day <laughs> celebration at the White House. How was that? It sounds even more ridiculous every time I hear it. Uh, it was incredible, yeah. Um, when we got the invite, I thought it was a joke. We thought it was, we spammed it. We, like, we thought it was a, all a, a lie. It just was like someone's name at the White House dot com. <laughs> if we would like the president would like to invite Niall as a guest to perform at St Patrick's, and we were like, "That's a that has to be a joke." Um, turned out it wasn't, <laughs> and we got suited and booted and flew to DC, and yeah, I won't forget that St Patrick's Day. And you were there, sort of representing Ireland, and sort of representing your country in a really interesting way. Too, yeah, you know? exactly. I said, I kind of said that on stage. I was like, "There's so many gifted." people from Ireland that you could have here and you've chosen me and um, I appreciate it and yeah it was just it was all a bit um, overwhelming but um, incredible and he was really nice man and Balanar right Mayo yeah Mayo and somewhere in Louth I think yeah but uh, he he f- he felt really Irish to me kind of like the way you do <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah he like when I when I was speaking to him everything you know Apart from the accent, felt re- really Irish, like yeah. the way he, his isms and his his way storytelling, and his the way he like speaks to you and holds onto your arm when he talks to you and all that. <laughs> he could have easily been Joe Biden from from Balna. From Balna. <laughs> did you? What did you see? You sang Heaven. I did Heaven. I did um, This Town. I did Flicker, and I they asked if I would do an Irish song. Yeah, and I did Spansel Hill. Wow. When I heard I was going to be doing it. I was the first thing that came to my mind was that song, just because of the, you know, the immigration stories of Irish people leaving and and moving to America to make a new life. Um, and there's so many stories like it. Um, the whole east coast of <laughs> the whole east coast of America is just full of Irish people. Yeah, um, between Boston, Chicago, and New York alone. I've been wondering about you, especially listening to this record, because it's been about, what, how many years since I saw you? Three well, years? I've seen you here probably 2019, early 2020, maybe, when I was on the run for the last album that stopped. So pandemic, um, I guess just a lot of life. Are you, do you feel different now than the last time I saw you? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I didn't realize how formative 25 to 30 would be. I feel like there's a lot of talk amongst about 16 to 20, 20 to 24, you know, ending high school, going to college. More happens between <laughs> 25 and 30. Um, for us, obviously, a bit different with a pandemic too, but a lot's happened for me. A lot and of personal growth, you mean? Or yeah, I, I feel like the only thing the pandemic was was good for, for me was, well, it allowed me to write this record, first of all, which I'm sure we'll delve into, but... I think it was a good time to really like reflect on what I'd done in my life. Yeah. Because I remember about six weeks into the first lockdown, I was going, well, this is obviously not going anywhere for a while. Remember yeah. everyone was like, it's going to be over. Two weeks. It'll be in two so. weeks. We'll be all and, out. Were you in Ireland or were you in? I was in LA when they announced the lockdown and I rushed back to London. Okay. <laughs> and, right. yeah. um, and settled down there then. Um but I remember thinking, we're not going anywhere here, and I should probably take this as like time off. And then I started thinking, I haven't had time off in, I can't remember, probably since 2010. Yeah, since, like you, the, were, since you were a kid. Yeah, kind of relaxed into it a little bit. I didn't, wasn't packing a suitcase every day, you know, to go to another place. So, and it then allowed me to like think back and look at old photos and videos and and like reflect on what's been going on for the previous 10 years up to that point um and like 
be grateful for it. You know, be nostalgic about it. Be really properly reflect instead of just onto the next thing. There, there was a, there was a line about the, the, that reminds me of that. I was reading an interview you did about the record. You said, "Last time I made an album, I did a lot less thinking." Mm. What did you mean by that? In hindsight, I probably just went in and just like just wrote to like just was constantly just writing all the time. Whereas this time, I wrote a lot less, but every song was had a considered approach to it. I felt, um, like for instance, if I was writing a song and I had a concept, if the melody wasn't matching what as str- if the melody wasn't as strong as what I was trying to say, I'd just scrap it and start again and wouldn't allow myself to go down the garden path of writing a crap song to a good concept. Yeah. Uh, well, I can hear that on the record. Can we, can we listen to one of the tracks? Take a listen to this. Got plans, better hurry because time flies. Hold tight, get ready for the ride. If everything was easy, nothing ever broke If everything was simple, how would we know? How to fix your tears, how to fake a show How to paint a smile, yeah, how would we know? It's Niall Horan with the show, the title track from his new album Tell me about that song It came in the middle of the lockdown I didn't, I didn't fancy writing very early on in the pandemic I'd just written an album, it was half promoted it, didn't get to tour it <laughs> That's right. I didn't realize that. You yeah, didn't get, you didn't get to tour it. No, so it was kind of a bit like probably like we all were kind of like angry at the world and just wanted to do nothing for a second and do all the reflecting. And I think it did me well in the end. Um, sitting and then I just sat down one night and and just the words "life is like a board game" some of the time came out my mouth <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, and then I realized that the show basically meant because it felt like Truman Show-esque during, during the pandemic it was like a bit of a, like an alternate reality sort yeah. of weird thing and I just realised that the show was like a metaphor for life and the good and the bad and the and the ugly about it um, and I, I remember writing those those lyrics and, and in the chorus it says as you just heard if everything was easy and nothing ever broke effectively how would we realise how good we had it previously yeah. You know, and it was really spoke to me pandemic wise and kind of a reflective song, like, and then it's going like, we should be grateful for what we have. Because look at us, we're locked away. <laughs> All of our powers as humans that we usually like to have, our control has gone out the window. Um, and that really said something to me. Did you struggle with being present before that? Like, um, you know, and being in that moment and. and I didn't. Uh, I don't think I did. Like, I, like I've always been, I've always like been quite present, but I don't think I've ever been like reflective. It was it, why not? I don't know. It's only in hindsight now I realise how reflective I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want that on a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's only in hindsight I've realised how reflective I was. Um, well, I guess everything's happening so fast. Yeah. When, I, when it's very easy to just. I think we all do it. It's very relative, but like we all just kind of just go along, and you're you're enjoying it for what's happening in the moment, um, and you're but you're always thinking about what's next. And what, I didn't, uh, yeah. What what is that? Like, does something surprising come to you, like when you were being reflective? I don't like the way you make it sound. Is that like because because I'm 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 understanding you. Mm. I really am. And I guess the picture I have in my mind is you're sort of in this empty kind of big room in Los Angeles or in London. <laughs> and you kind of go from the the band to the solo career. It all happens so unbelievably quickly. Mm. You've been essentially on tour or doing press your entire life mm-hmm. uh, or decompressing from being on tour, mm-hmm. or, you know. And then all of a sudden you you get a moment to to reflect a little bit. I guess what I'm what I'm wondering is is there anything you you start to realize that maybe you hadn't thought of before? Is is there anything anything new that comes to you? Does that does that moment give you anything that maybe you hadn't found before? I think it's more just really realizing what's happened. I'm not sure if it's new. Like I've always realized what's been going on around me. Like I haven't been I haven't had my eyes closed for ten years up to that point. But it's it's getting a ch- it's just having a chance to do it. When you're as I said, when you're moving all the time, you don't get the chance to do it. 
Yeah, I don't really know how to describe it in any way. No, that, that's, a, that's a beautiful way to do it. Let's, let's, um, let's listen to the, another song on the record. Let's not get complicated. Let's just enjoy the view. It's hard to be a human. So much to put an answer to. I think that's my favorite chorus I've heard. I'm not. I'm not even messing. I'm not even just saying that because you're here. I think that's like my favorite chorus I've heard in five years. Yeah, I'm. I love that chorus. It's so yeah. good. Feels uplifting. Yeah, and it's catchy. It doesn't really yeah. sound like anything else. It's not right. It's not on the downbeat. Like it's really, yeah, yeah. really interesting. It was one of those ones where the melody was flying around, and the groove came separately. You had that melody for a while. Yeah, we were singing it. I was singing it for like a day. Just going na 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 na. And it felt like nursery rhymey, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. L- Lullaby esque. And then the groove was a separate thing. Mm-hmm. And they just, and that's why it's not on the down. It's know. not right under that. That makes sense to me. That right? makes sense now, actually, yeah. now that you've said that. Um, <laughs> but, happy, uh, I'm happy to help. Yeah, yeah, but if you want to come in and do a production, uh, <laughs> listen, my, my, my rates are very reasonable. Uh, tell me a little bit about that song. This one, uh, it's something I've always thought is that we love watching other people live their lives and then think that we need to do that. We um, love watching we love watching other people live their lives and think that we need to do that. We we, we watch like like we watch the perfect life or you know, it's but like I'm thinking about growing up and you see you know, you leave school, you get your degree, you settle down, you have kids, you buy a house, you live happily ever after. You yeah, know, eventually like, they have kids, you become a grandparent, you retire from your job, yeah, yeah. You, you, you become a pensioner and you and you watch TV and you go to bed. Correct. Yeah. Play a bit of golf there too. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought uh, like, okay, that's that's fair enough. Um, but that, like it it feels to me like it's a, like nearly become like a societal pressure. <laughs> you know, when you get to certain points in your life and it's like people are like, oh, so what's your plan next? You know? Yeah. Have you got your ducks in a row? Yeah. And I've just thought, I don't know why, I've just, even since a kid, like, I've always been a bit, like, blasé about the whole thing and just kind of, fingers crossed, hope for the best, <laughs> cross that bridge when I come to it, obviously. Um, so I just, I, I always thought it was a good, cool topic to write about. And I've, like, with, with my relationship now, I've always been, I think previously, I remember writing a song on my last album called Dear Patience, and it was this me writing, writing to myself, going, be patient here live in the moment don't try and ruin it within the first few months because you get scared and like it um, and I think this was me writing the, the counter to that was basically saying don't try and future proof anything here really like live in the moment take it as it goes you know the good the bad that comes with it and it'll blossom into something that hopefully turns out great but I'm not like trying to future proof basically is what I'm saying when you're, when you're in a relationship there's this feeling that like okay well, this is going well mm. how do I make sure it, it lasts forever mm. and then, then there's marriage and then there's all these mm. things that, that life demands in us and maybe I have felt pressure to do or I have felt pressure from my family or mm. from society or from especially in Ireland you know like mm-hmm. a, a certain sort of uh, a certain sort of life you're, you're saying the song to you was about how can I just be with this person and and happy and, yeah. and not worry worry too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because I've always been like a I've overthought that period on multiple occasions and ruined <laughs> yeah. many a good thing. So because we're all that's what we do. We're always trying to look for the next. What can we do next? Mm-hmm. And it's just like just let's just enjoy now. Like I know it's like the, the you know the overused phrase of live in the moment, but we we do forget to do it a lot. Oh my God! Yes, I mean, like, especially with phones, and especially uh, with all these it's things, crazy. you know, it's unbelievable. Um, so yeah, I just felt like it was a a topic in my that's been a reoccurrence, <laughs> and wanted something that I've wanted to sort out. And I think heaven, right in heaven, was a was a good opportunity for that. And did it help you? Did it help you sort out something by writing it? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, there's there's no doubt that was. Um, yeah, because it's a topic that I probably wouldn't have written about before. You know, it would have been very much just a heartbreak thing, and then that was it. You know, it's yeah. just like when you have other stuff to write about. As I said, sitting mm-hmm. still provokes other, other thoughts, and this has been a thought of mine that has been going around in my head for a long time. 
I feel like I'm hearing you reckon with time moving at all. I'm hearing you talk on the record what sounds to me like maybe you're you're being open about anxiety or mm. being being open about about things like that. Am I on to something that may – and I don't, I don't know if I've ever heard you be that candid about, mm. about these things before. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, again, the thinking, sitting still, thinking those things, like it all, they all wrap around each other. It's just like these are the things that are going on. You're, um, it was pretty much – at the time, it was very much impossible to not be anxious in some shape or form, like what's going on in the world. Yeah, you were feeling that, I'm sure. Yeah, then we all were. And then just watching people close to me deal with their – different levels of anxiety and I think it's a very I have a song called Meltdown where yeah. it's very easy to go when some, when you're watching someone being anxious it's very easy to go calm down yeah, everything's fine yeah um, but when you're in that sh- you know when you're in that state it's very hard to get you down yeah and it's very hard for you to think okay this is going to be over soon and um, actually the Meltdown song <laughs> I remember tell, um, me, tell me about that song as I said watching other people do their thing um, and I wanted it to be as fast as I could possibly make it yeah um, because that any song I've written previously has been a ballad yeah and I don't think that reflects the speed at which your heart and your head are working yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I wanted it to be it's 180 BPM or something the, the verses are really tense and then there's a release in the chorus even at 180 there's a release um, and that's what happens you get tense and then all of a sudden you're fine. And I remember, I don't know who, who was it that said the, the original quote? I don't want to say it out loud in case I get it wrong, but I remember watching a round table kind of thing like this. Yeah. And Tom Hanks and Bob De Niro. This, and, this too shall pass. Yeah. Tom Hanks says in this, in this um, um, interview with, it's Robert De Niro, Tom Hanks. Adam Sandler. Yeah. And Tom Hanks says something like, the, the thing that I wish I had always known, I wish someone had told me, yeah. was, was, is this too shall pass. Yeah. If some, I, my favorite part is he says, when things are bad, this too shall pass. And when things are good, this too shall pass. <laughs> but that is, sums it all up for me. It will pass. Um, again, when you're in the scenario, you're thinking... You're not thinking this too shall pass, are you? You're thinking I'm having a full on meltdown here. I remember um, when I was, I had a, um, I used to suffer from really bad panic attacks. Mm. And um, I, the thing that helped me get over it, uh, if I can say I got over it, is um, time, literally timed it. Mm. I was sitting in my therapist's office. She induced a panic attack. Yeah. How did you manage that? It's a thing like, it's a thing you can do. Like there's, there's things you can do. You can figure out what you're susceptible to and you can give yourself a panic. I don't attack. know if I want to meet her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not a therapist. I just met her at, I met her at McDonald's. <laughs> she, she works, she works, she runs the McFlurry machine, you know, and she, so she, she's just very stressed out. No, but she, she said to me, she said, um, she gave me a panic attack. She, she induced one mm. and I had one in front of her. I never told the story before. And, uh, it came and it went, and it was seven minutes. Mm-hmm. And I had this realization that, oh, that's it. Mm-hmm. It, it went, yeah. and it takes seven minutes. So I remember th- then I would start getting panic attacks and going, I just got to wait seven minutes. Mm-hmm. Probably wouldn't even end up being seven minutes in the end. No, and then eventually it went to like five minutes and three yeah, minutes, yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then just went away. That's amazing. But though at your level, though, is there anything... You're very famous. Is there anything risky about writing about anxiety or, or anything like that? Do you feel any, do you, like, do you feel any of that? Um, no, I don't, I don't, like I've always tried to be as honest as I can when I'm writing, when I'm sat here. Yeah. Like I've always tried to, I think people see through the fake stuff. Yeah. Um, as I said, it's, I'm writing it for me and I'm writing it for what I know is going on in the world. Yeah. And in the world we live in, there are a lot of anxieties due to societal pressures, different world issues. Yeah, social media. Uh, social media, work problems, yeah. exam problems, mm-hmm. life problems, mm-hmm. marriage issues, I don't know, whatever it may be. Like, mm-hmm. just some things can't be explained. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I, I know who I'm speaking to, too, when I, the, my fan, the fans. Mm-hmm. And um, I see it every day online. I'm, I'm watching it. I saw you were doing The Voice, mm. the the TV show, the mm-hmm. the, the uh, talent competition. 
For people who don't know, you got your start that way. Yep. On a on a on a talent competition. So the the One Direction story is that the that you were uh, you each in, went in individually and then you got put in a band and your life. We talked about this last time you were here. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Like we, we talked. We, I think we played. For, we're not going to do it again. But we we, we, played, <laughs> we played. We played. Them. You were very kind to us last time. <laughs> but we played to you the moment that everything kind of um, changed for you. What's it like being back in that sort of place? I wasn't sure what to make of it. Like when I got the call, like I was thinking, do I want to do that again? Do I? Is, am I right for this? Um, I'd never like. I'd been on TV. Obviously, but I've never really like been in that role where it's you're effectively if Carson Daly's not there, we host the show. Yeah, you know the, the banter between us is in between acts is is vital to the show. So I wasn't sure if I'd be good at it, if there would be a level of you know when you're sitting there with these like superstars. I was thinking it had a bit of like imposter syndrome. Um. Yeah, all these kinds of things. I was thinking. Even you, you you can get imposter syndrome with oh yeah, Chance the Rapper and Blake Shelton and um, Kelly Clarkson and all that. You can get that. Yeah, well, not with them, not with them because they were great in the yeah. end. Yeah. But um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely have it. Yeah, there's wow. no doubt. Uh, yeah, and then I just I took the meeting with with the two ladies that are exec producers of the show, who are turns out absolute legends and have this show down to an absolute science. Um, and then I was I was just all in and. What I was worried about was that if it was going to be overproduced on the spot, mm-hmm. told what to do, say, mm-hmm. who to pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, based on the backstory that they've got on them for TV. But we actually don't end up finding out anything about them before their auditions. Yeah. The, the auditions just happen. We sit in the chair, we press a button when you feel like you want to. But is there any part of it that's a trip for you? Because you're like, this is this was me. That That person on stage was me. It's mental. I, yeah. I, I, I've done we've taped probably 100 hours of it and yeah. every single time I turn around I think the same thing <laughs> it's crazy like you're looking at the I've got I keep mentioning it because it's so poignant I've got like a 15 year old guy in my team yeah and every time I look at him I'm like I was you you can sing a lot better than me <laughs> 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 um, but like like seeing his face and I remember what it was like standing on stage and getting feedback from you weren't even listening there was so much going on in your head that like whatever I was saying whatever the, the coaches were saying it was like you were just you were present but you weren't you were there and you were there standing but you were a baby too right you're a baby really you're a yeah. child when that stuff happens I was happens, like 16 yeah it's unbelievable you know I think that's what has made it an enjoyable experience is having the empathy with them like they're coming on like shaking like leaves They've got two and a half minutes to put on their best performance possible. Um, and then I make a, a brutal decision on whether they go through or not. Um, I've struggled with that part too, because having the, the power of what happens next in their lives is literally down to me going yes and no. Um, yeah. As it was for you. Correct. I just... That could have that could have turned out... It could have different. literally been me um, going the opposite way. So, yeah, I've definitely... I've definitely realized that doing this. Was there a part of you that was like, um, I don't know, this is, is this a dumb question? Uh, is there a I'll part of you. That, <laughs> I know you will. Uh, is there a part of you that when they were like, hey, we're going to put you in a band, that you were like, I, don't, I came here to be by myself for God's sake? At the time, I remember thinking, well, I want to stay in the competition. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to go home now. <laughs> and then got to know the boys and it was different. But yeah, no. Yeah, no, I remember thinking I'd just I'd rather be in the competition than not be in it. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. you were ostensibly you went in the competition to be a solo artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanted to win and be uh-huh. a solo artist. And then Buddy looks at you and goes, "Yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> we'll put you with these other fellas." <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite funny, isn't it? Um, sliding doors, sliding doors. Yeah. How life? How 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 what life would have turned out mm-hmm. differently? I mean, that was I mean that was an amazing. What I mean, do you do you give advice to these people on the show and talk to them about what their life might look like after this, knowing what happened to you? I don't think you can. I don't yeah. think you can say to them what's going to happen next. I think it's about getting them through the show, getting them as far as you possibly can, and getting them to enjoy it. Because I remember being on the show, we had the best laugh of all time. Because everyone was just saying, "Enjoy this." Because I used to see people leave the X Factor house on a Sunday night after getting booted off the show, packing their bag and leaving, and then that was it. So I was just like, "Enjoy it for what it is," and then 
hopefully you'll have something afterwards. Of course, that's that's the idea. But enjoy this show. You're on national television. Millions of people watching. You're singing songs you want to sing. Enjoy, enjoy the thing. You can sing. You're on The Voice. Like they don't send crap singers onto The Voice. Yeah, they're all technically gifted and tones of yeah. angels. Do you think about longevity? All the time in this in, in this in this music in this industry. That's probably half the anxiety is wanting the want. <laughs> yeah, the want for sustainability is probably what gives you the most anxiety. Sustainability or long or like the longevity is just like sustain what I have now, you know, and like keep it going and make it make it into a long, you know, a career of longevity um, is the most important thing to me now. The idea of having a young audience when you're young. And then being able to sustain an audience into your 30s mm. seems impossible. Mm-hmm. And I think it's quite remarkable that you've been able to do it. Yeah. And I think that's where it all, that's where, that's part of the reflection period. Yeah. <laughs> realizing that. Realizing that. Because when you're going, when you're cruising along in it all, it's like very easy to just be blase about it all. Yeah. And then you sit down, and you're like, I'm the luckiest man in the world. But I'm looking at the crowd now and like I just, came from a thing and I sat in front of 50 of them and it's it's just coming up with me yeah I think that's half the thing as well as they're all the same age I don't think I've changed too much yeah <laughs> and so they're still getting the same person just in an older form <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I don't know what it's down to but I just know that I'm very lucky to have it it sounds like it's down to the honesty that you were talking about you said to me I, 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 I caught that earlier when you said you didn't just say, I'll be honest with you, Tom, you know, that's the way I want to live my life. Mm. You said, people can tell. Oh, there's no doubt. You know? Like, you see, we see it so often. Like, I could see, th- I could watch one interview of someone and just be like, you're a wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in an industry that doesn't favor honesty all the time, I think that's, that's, um, that's, yeah. that's powerful. And I think we're seeing it more and more. I think uh, it's been a good thing about social media probably is that you get to see people in a more public facing light mm-hmm. um, but you look at like it's good to see like I'm not speaking about myself here but it is good to see good people do good stuff yeah like if you look at Capaldi and yeah and and what's happened with Harry and mm-hmm. you're seeing it more you're seeing, you know the Dermot Kennedys of the world the the hosiers the like it's starting to <laughs> the good guys are starting to win you know yeah what what are you most proud of looking back now that we're ref- in reflection mode? What are you most proud of? This is probably the least humble thing I'll say. Keeping my head on my shoulders and remaining humble. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that, that takes you uh, to say that. And so many people say it to me. I think that's why I can probably say it out loud now. Um, considering what um, has happened to me at, at a young age, I, I, I sometimes shock myself <laughs> how I haven't lost the plot. Oh, I can tell you that um, from the moment I met you, I felt that way about you, Bai. And uh, uh, it's a it's a great new record, and it's exactly what you said it was. It's 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 reflective, um, it's it's honest, and it's someone uh, understanding their very preca- precarious place in the world, mm-hmm. and um, and expressing some appreciation for that. Indeed, I hope we're still talking thirty, forty years from now. I hope we both still have jobs, Tom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you got a better shot than me. Bai. I don't know, Thank- um, but thanks for having me again. This is my third time. Come back uh, again. And I feel that gap every time, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Niall Horn was my guest. His new album is called The Show. It is out everywhere June 9th. <laughs>